Hello everyone, Joint Squad just released their May 2018 recap and there's a lot of goodies in here. A lot of teasers with the tanks and future features as well. So we're going to go through and talk about it. It's a really short recap, but I just want to give my thoughts and impressions of this recap and what I can't wait for. So first off, the thing that they're talking about teasing is the randomized AAS. And I think this is going to do a lot for Squad because right now we're limited to a couple layers that the devs have put out. And we're kind of locked to that. Custom maps and layers don't really get used on custom servers too often. It's really hard to keep a custom server popped. So randomizing AAS will allow more dynamic play replayability as far as AAS goes. My one gripe with this is that AAS as a game mode, for me, actually is not that fun. Uh, AAS is really static. It focuses on single points on the map, and it doesn't really open up the map like uh, how Hell at Loose or other ter territory control game modes open up maps. It's still a very uh, singular, linear di uh kind of dimension that you're working with as far as gameplay goes but randomizing it can help the dynamic gameplay as far as the current version of aas uh, i can't wait for uh, squad and postscriptum to implement their own versions of territory control simply because i believe territory control is the future but for now randomized aas will have to do in terms of uh reviving the replayability of squad so what it essentially is is exactly what it sounds like uh, there's going to be multiple different cap zones, and the map will generate which series of chains and which path it'll use for that particular layer. So every time you play that map, it'll pick a different point. And while that does allow you to play over different parts of the map every single time, it doesn't open up the entire map, like I said before. Uh, whereas in games like Hell Let Loose, you're able to use the entirety of the map every single game. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how well they implement this and how this does refresh AES. But personally, I'm still waiting for territory control for Postscriptum and Squad. Uh, the next thing that they're talking about is the vehicle component damage system. Now, as a lot of you know, Postscriptum and Squad share the same core OWI system. This means that a lot of their features are going to be rather similar. Uh, so you can see that the features within Postscriptum as far as vehicle damage and the tanks, they're trying to bring towards uh, Squad. So localized damage where, you know, hitting certain parts of the tanks will do certain amount uh, certain amounts of damage and damage certain systems that's i believe going to be prevalent in both squad and postscriptum and we're most likely going to see that when uh in both games at the same time so when squad works on something or when postscriptum works on something uh you can bet that they're going to be sharing those systems between the two games which is amazing because you know it accelerates the development prog process of both these games but it, it just doesn't really surprise us right because it's expected at this point because they're sharing the same system but it will be cool. This is something I have been waiting for, you know, to be um, to mobility kill a vehicle or to knock out its gun, right? Or to slow it down with your weapon. That's going to be awesome because instead right now, the current system is you just blow it up. So if a BTR takes three lat shots and it's still alive, it's still working 100% capacity. It's still killing as efficiently as if it was at 100% health. Whereas right now, whereas in the future, as it takes damage, as certain systems uh, take hits, it's going to decrease the effectiveness of that vehicle, which is, I think, a good model to have, right? Because you don't want like one vehicle taking two lat shots and still working completely fine. You want to have some kind of model where that vehicle does degrade with the amount of damage it takes, right? Decreases its combat effectiveness. It cr changes how that vehicle plays and how that crew's thinking, and it'll definitely change the pacing of vehicle combat. So can't wait for this. This is going to be very exciting. It's going to slow down the vehicles, I think, and give in infantry more of a shot. Because right now, like, if you miss your, or, or even if you hit your lat shots, that vehicle's still operating 100% and you're out of ammo now and it's still operating. So this is going to balance the infantry and uh, vehicle gameplay. So I can't wait for that. That's going to be really cool, too. Uh, turret stabilization. This is something that a lot of you are waiting for. Uh, this is going to stop people from having seizures. Uh, right now, Squad and Postscriptum both have vehicle stutter simply because of the servers from the OWI core, and that's driving people nuts in the turrets. Uh, but once they fix that and they add turret stabilization, it should be so much easier for drivers and gunners to work together. Uh, your gun is going to be much more stable. You're not going to have the jitteriness. You're not going to be nauseous. You're not going to feel like you want to throw up uh, while you're manning a turret anymore. It's going to be a lot smoother. It's going to be stabilized, and the stuttering hopefully will be gone as well, which makes vehicle gunners on the move extremely extremely more lethal than before right because right now in in squad you have to stop the vehicle in order to get accurate shots on whereas once they add the turret stabilization and remove the jitter you're going to be able to engage targets while moving this is much different from postscriptum where postscriptum uh turrets don't necessarily have turret stabilization as that technology was not you know widely present so in postscriptum you're still gonna have to stop and shoot which is different vehicle combat from what squad is going for with the newer technology of turret, st turret stabilization across multiple uh, vehicles. 
So that's going to be really cool. Uh, modding for Linux, this is, you know, just for those uh, server owners. Uh, and then the new assets they're, that they're adding, the FV432 uh, APC, right? This is going to be the British APC. Right now, the Brits only have two vehicles, right? They have their support trucks and they have their warrior. They don't really have an in-between, right? Like the uh, Russians have the MTLB and the BTR and the US have the... Uh, uh, the Matt V's and the BTRs and now the Bradley as well. So it's going to be really cool to have another asset in there for uh, Brits. They're going to get a little bit more flushed out, have that center APC vehicle that uh, the other factions have, right? So it's like this is kind of their mirror to the MTLV, uh, which is good because uh, you can't really load up too many people in the Warrior. Hopefully this FV4432 uh, uh, can carry a lot more. But um, yeah, it's cool that they're fleshing out the Brits a little bit more because they did need another vehicle. Uh, the M1A1 Abrams. So this was leaked, uh, I think, last patch when V11 came out. Uh, they accidentally left the code to spawn one of these in-game. So they, they've got it modeled. It's in-game. Uh, people were spawning them in and taking, them, uh, taking a look at it. But they're not ready yet, right? That's why they aren't released yet. So tanks. Now, before my, my previous opinion of tanks were meh, right? I don't really care for tanks, right? That was my original thought. After playing Postscriptum multi-crew tanks... I love tanks. I'm in love with tanks. Uh, more specifically, I'm in love with the idea of multi-crew tanks. Working with four people in a Cromwell was one of the most experiences while gaming I've ever had. And like War Thunder and World of Tanks, like these don't even match it because I think the thing that pulls it together for me is the multi-crewed aspect, right? The fact that you're communicating and there's teamwork involved with multiple people in one vehicle. Uh, and that's going to be with the vehicle, uh, with the tanks, because right now BTRs and all the other armored vehicles right now in squad, those are two man vehicles. But once they get tanks in, I do hope that they work on fleshing out the crew systems for a lot of these vehicles and make it so that it's a multi crew effort, not just a driver and a gunner, because uh, that would be really cool. That that level of teamwork and, uh, you know, coercion or not coercion, uh, cooperation is just what squad is about, right? That teamwork, that communication, it's so important and it really brings the game into its own form, right? Sets it apart from Battlefield and COD and all these other games where you don't even need to talk to anyone. So the, the reason why squad is so popular is because that level of teamwork is necessary. That level of communication is vital, right? So seeing that being transferred not only from the infantry level of things, but to the vehicles is going to be great. Because I think the gunner driver thing is a little bit too easy. And it's just, uh, it shows so much in Postscriptum how much fun a multi-crewed, a good multi-crewed tank system works. Uh, so I can't wait for the M1A1 now. I can't wait for the tanks just having a multi-crewed. Uh, just because that's going to be so much fun to work with a team like a small group of four guys rolling around the map taking out enemy armor. Of course, if they introduce the M1A1, they got to int introduce a Russian counterpart, which is the T-72, right? Uh, very popular tank, very widespread tank. Uh, and this is going to just be the Russian counterpart. So, you know, those tank v tank battles are going to be a thing. And I can't wait to get them in squad. I love them in Postscriptum. It's like my favorite thing to do in Postscriptum is rock around in a tank. Uh, and hopefully it's one of my favorite things to do in squad as well. But we'll see how they implement their own system uh, to kind of make it so it's not completely uh, mimicking Postscriptums. Uh, but yeah, cool 72, uh, T-72 is all, all modeled and textured. Uh, and then, of course, we got the Coronet coming, right? Right now, the uh, Russians are using the uh, Toe, but the actual proper Russian uh, counterpart is the Coronet. So, you know, this is going to be uh, the counterpart to the Americans, right? So they did the same thing a long time ago when they added the uh, 50 cals. They gave everyone 50 cals until they got the Dishkas and the NSV modeled. But once they got this mod, they handed them out to the right... Uh, faction so this is something i think we'll see them do a lot it's like once they get a, a cool asset done they'll just give it to all the factions until they flesh out the counter the proper historical pa counterparts to the uh to the other factions right or not historical i guess the just proper ones right it's not really historical it's current uh but all right belaya update so this got me thinking uh they're doing a map update where they're trying to increase the cover so postscriptum really showed how well their map design was there was cover everywhere there were ditches there were things to get behind uh there were things to to crouch uh underneath there were things to 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 get you to a point without getting shot in the open and it showed me how bad squad's map design is right now at least how unfleshed out it is because in postscriptum you could find cover everywhere there's a ton of things rocks uh overturned uh baskets like uh sheds um 
ditches, uh, trenches. There's a ton of stuff, uh, berms that, that you could get prone behind or, or crouch behind. In squad, I've talked about this before, but in squad, the majority of the cover is vertical. You got trees or buildings and very few rocks. Uh, Camdash is one of the newer maps that actually has a lot of horizontal ground cover, uh, whether it be a ton of rocks on the floor, tree trunks lying down. Uh, Camdash is one of the uh, maps that actually has the proper amount of cover. I do think they could even go for a little bit more. Uh, but a lot of these other maps, Balaya, Gordok, uh, Kohat, uh, Fool's Road, a lot of these maps lack cover. You got open grass, you got a couple rocks here and there, and then you got trees. And honestly, the tree hi hiding behind a vertical thin tree is just getting old, right? I want something that's solid that I can get down behind, and Camdash was one of the first maps in squad that had that. I hope they follow Postscriptum's example and continue adding more things on the ground to get behind, because Postscriptum had so much stuff. They even had, like, trenches and small little ditches you could get down into, um... Like, and there was just so much cover, you were never really stressed for cover unless you intentionally walked out into an open field. Uh, they even had, like, gliders in the open fields and actual objects in the open field, aside from trees, that gave you a ton of cover. So I'm hoping as they go back and rework, as Squad goes back and rework some of these maps, we do see a lot more of that ground horizontal cover rather than just trees and bushes. Because uh, it, it really, you really do feel exposed in Squad compared to Postscriptum, especially with the amount of optics that contemporary forces have in Squad, right? It's really hard to cross any terrain in squad because there are so many optics and there's just not that much cover so hopefully you know they work on that and they uh, get all that cover and take a note from postscriptum which has absolutely amazing map design um the tank combat can't wait for it especially after playing postscriptum honestly postscriptum did a lot of things right there are a couple of things i want to see him change you can go see my uh, first impressions of postscriptum's video uh, on my channel as well and uh, where i go in more in depth about what i liked about postscriptum but yeah, both of them working together, right? Postscriptum and Periscope, or not Postscript, uh, Offworld Industries and Periscope Games sharing the same Offworld core, uh, working and sharing systems is going to mean a lot of progress, a lot of development going on between the two, sharing those features, and then we're going to see a lot of progress uh, at a really fast rate because they're sharing the same system. So a lot of cool things. Um, I'm very excited at how fast they're going to be able to push out content. That's, I think, the most important thing that we take away is that they're going to be able to push out content really quickly with the way that they're doing things. And that's good because, uh, you know, Squad was at a period where the development cycle was taking a long time. Patches were months in between. And it looks like we're getting a patch at least a month now, every month now. So that's hopefully the pace that I hope that they keep just to keep the game fresh, flesh out the game more. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Remember to leave a comment and like. Uh, and then make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button for future content. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.